Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Yes, good afternoon uh, or good morning, depending on what coast you are joining us from. I want to thank everybody who logged in early. We appreciate that. I want to first start off by doing a quick sound check. I want to make sure that everybody is hearing my voice right now um, before we get the session started. So if you're on the line, if you don't mind, if you could please use either the question or the chat function and just throw a little note through uh, that you are hearing me right now, that would be great. All right, I got a confirmation that the sound was coming through good, so I appreciate that. <clears throat> um, we're just a few minutes out from the start of the session, so a couple of quick things before uh, that starts. There'll be a little bit of a pause um, before it actually begins, um, because we'll have to kind of get the, the, uh, the recording kicked off and then a couple of other kind of uh, items set up before the actual uh, audio portion of the, of the webinar today begins. Um, so if you can just kind of hang tight, there'll be a kind of a brief pause and we'll come back, uh, in about, I'd say one minute before, and we'll, we'll go over a couple of other quick, quick items. So brief pause, and then we will be right back on. Thank you. Again, for everybody who's joined, uh, we want to welcome you, make sure that you can all hear me okay, and let you know that we're going to start the session in just about two, two minutes. So, brief pause, we'll be right back on shortly. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get a few things kicked off here before we start the presentation. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things as far as the actual, uh, you know, as far as the actual presentation goes, um, we are going to be recording today's session. So there will be a copy of this um, made uh, so that everybody um, has it and you can kind of share it with, with others uh, on your team uh, if you like. Um, we're going to go ahead and get that started in just a moment. So just kind of bear with us as we kind of get that queued up. A um, <clears throat> couple of other things. We, I want to welcome everybody uh, to today's session. The best practices for conducting data integrity assessments. Um, we'll go into today's presenter in just a moment. But Marcel, we can go to the next slide, please. Before we get into today's session, we want to first explain exactly who it is uh, that Asterix is uh, and why we think we've got the right to talk to you about this topic today. First and foremost, uh, we are a professional services company that is staffed entirely by informatics professionals. Um, we are dedicated to providing informatics professional services as well as staffing. Uh, to the scientific community. Now, the company itself was established way back in 1995. It's privately held, uh, and it was originally 
the IT division of a company called APBI, which was at that time a $300 million life sciences research organization. Today, uh, Asterix operates in eight offices and it has a little over 500 employees. Uh, it's headquartered in Red Bank, New Jersey, and it has two primary divisions. The first division is a staffing division. This is predominantly a scientific staffing and IT staffing division. Uh, again, it predominantly services uh, the public sector as well as private uh, scientific uh, and research companies. So there's a professional services division. That's the division that's talking to you to today. Uh, this group is focused 100% uh, on providing informatics, technology, uh, support, and value-added services uh, to life science organizations. And again, that could be everything from implementation of laboratory software like LIMS and ELN to helping companies migrate from land-based technology to cloud-based technology. So a wide array uh, of services, as well as really helping, uh, which is very important, helping laboratories determine what technology they need. Uh, oftentimes, uh, companies find themselves buying technology for the sake of buying technology. Asterix really gets in there and helps uh, labs truly understand the, the tech that's needed to modernize and run your lab most efficiently without wasting a lot of money. Um, so pretty, pretty critical uh, set of services there. The companies we target um, are Fortune 1000 Life Sciences, government and research institutions. The mission of the company has and always been to deliver scalable, sustainable solutions in IT and staffing for the scientific community. Next slide, please. The services. So um, we won't get too much into detail on in this because certainly you can talk to us about this after the fact, but at a really high level, it's kind of five core areas, strategic planning, pro-serve, uh, development and implementation, compliance and quality, which is kind of what you're dealing with today, as well as managed services. Now, within each of those, there's a pretty wide array of, of services that fall underneath those. Um, you know, from the strategic planning, oftentimes it has to do with, you know, developing your business case for the type of, of tech that you need to implement. For the ProServe, it's really about uh, doing evaluations and business analysis and project management for companies to help them choose the right systems. Um, <clears throat> whether that's, you know, choosing the right uh, upgrade path or choosing outright new systems. On the implementation side, it's just, it's traditional, you know, we, we work with uh, a wide array of technology partners in the space uh, to implement their software. On the compliance, uh, it's folks like that you're going to hear a talk today um, are going to go in and help you do the validation, uh, the risk management, building frameworks for compliance and quality management, and then managed services is really we can kind of, you know, be your staffing vendor uh, as well as, as providing uh, services uh, on an on-demand basis, whether that's in the cloud or whether that's, you know, services uh, in, your, in your lab. Next slide, please. Before we get into it, I do want to mention that uh, today's session is the first of, of 12 that we're going to do this year on a variety of topics. And um, the topic that we're going to be covering in March, so we want to make you aware of this, um, it's called Enterprise Architectural Assessments for Integrated Labs. This is going to be on the 26th at 1 p.m. Uh, topics that we're going to cover are going to be the benefits of conducting an architectural assessment, uh, the importance of alignment with the scientific process to maximize business and tech goals, uh, use of roadmap to guide transition to future state, and the importance of risk identification. So a really good uh, session to really delve into, you know, how labs should um, think about selection of new technology. Um, <clears throat> when we send the follow-up materials to everybody, so when you get the PDF and when you get the video, um, you will also get a link to where you can uh, hopefully register and join us for, for that webinar in March. So. Uh, with that, we'll, we're going to uh, go ahead and move to the next slide, and we're going to turn this over to the capable hands of Marcelo Suarez, who is an informatics engineer uh, here at Asterix. I'm going to let uh, Marcelo come on and uh, and introduce himself, tell you a little bit about his background, and then he'll kind of take it from here. Marcelo? Hey, thanks, Kevin. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, for hearing about the integrity with me. I'm Marcelo Suarez. I'm from the Professional Services Division here at Asterix. I work as an informatics engineer, and I help laboratories uh, on lots of phases during system selections, implementations, supporting them, all steps throughout life cycles. And I've been doing this for the last 15 years, both here at Asterix on, on the previous companies I have been working with. And one of the topics that appear a lot on many steps of any organization is a concern about data integrity. So the objective of today's webinar is to talk a little bit more about what is data integrity, 
And how can we implement that? How can we develop data integrity within a company, within our organization? Uh, ways of doing this as a best practice, how to build a data integrity the best way possible, and what benefits do you get from having periodic reviews of your data integrity efforts on your company? So let's hop into these slides and we'll talk briefly about each one of those topics here. All right, so first of all, what is data integrity? So let's begin by leveraging the definition of data integrity. So here we have a definition. Uh, although we are talking about definitions set by the FDA, if you are here in this call and you're not from a drug or food company or from other markets, don't worry, the concept is still applicable, whichever market you have. So as per the FDA definition, uh, data integrity refers to the completeness, consistency, and accuracy of data and complete, complete, consistent, and accurate data should be attributable, legible, contemporaneously recorded, original or a true copy, and accurate. And this is known by this acronym called ALCOA. So what is an attributable record? Is a record that you can tell who did it. So people is, are accountable for that record. Legible, it's legible on a human format. You are able to read that and figure out what's happening. Contemporaneous, it was registered at the time that that data register really occurred. Original, it must be the original register or a truthful copy of that, like for example, an SDMS copy of some documentation. And accurate, it needs to be accountable in terms of accuracy, checked by a second person that it meets what it was needed to register. There is also another definition, which is known by Alcoa Plus, that adds some other letters to this mixture. Uh, the other letters would be for complete. So all data regarding a certain analysis in, is included as part of all the documentation, including the data that did not uh, pass criteria. Consistent, consistent generation of reporting and timestamps Reports are generated in a consistent manner, always the same way. Enduring, all registers are done on a way that it can be kept throughout the entire data cycle, data life cycle. And last but not least, available. It needs to be easily available for review, audits, and inspections. So all those concepts, it's regardless of being a pharmaceutical or a food company, they all apply. So what is, for example, one of the regulatory agencies, the FDA perception on data integrity over the last couple of years? Uh, in recent years, FDA has seen a, a growing number of data integrity registers. And for FDA's opinion, this is troubling because ensuring data integrity is an important company of industry's responsibility to ensure safety, efficacy, and quality of drugs and also the FDA ability to protect the public health. Uh, this is an important point for you, for you to see why FDA is so focused on checking data integrity. They, they hold themselves also accountable with you to protect the public health. So if they're also accountable to guarantee the public health is guaranteed, then they are gonna check if you are doing a part of the job. So they can guarantee that they are also doing their part of the job. So that's the reason why we've seen an increasing uh, worrying and perception on data integrity issues. Just to name two examples outside of a pharma scenario, for example, two no examples of data integrity issues. For example, the Volkswagen Dieselgate case, uh, what happened is a purposeful tampering of data. Uh, Volkswagen tampered with their ECU programming in a way that if a car was set to do an emission testing, it would know it was undergoing an emission testing and would lower their emissions to pass the test. And once you get out of their testing environment, then the car starts emitting again. The estimate toll of this behavior is around 5,000 deaths related to nitrous oxide emissions in Europe only. And to this moment in time, Volkswagen is already charged over $30 billion and counting in terms of 
regulatory agencies fees from different countries and different organizations. So this is an example of a purposeful data integrity issue. The second example here is an example of uh, an accident in terms of data integrity issue as well. Uh, this is an image of the Mar NASA Mars Climate Orbiter. Uh, this was a satellite that was launched in 1998 estimating $125 million to study the Mars atmosphere. But by the time the, this probe got into Mars, it crashed in the planet. So what happened here technically is that two systems that belonged to this satellite, they were programmed differently. One was making calculations in American standard metrics, and the other system was using international standard metrics the same number but with two different complete different measurements so the problem here uh, as edward weiler from nasa uh, stated is the problem was not exactly the error that occurred but the failure of nasa to identify the error and the lack of enough checks and balances to avoid that the problem occurred they had several opportunities to fully test the system and make sure that data was integer all across the satellite operation. They had alarms, they had meetings uh, where people saw differences in the satellite altitude, but they didn't have enough mechanisms to avoid the issue. So the problem here was not exactly the error, but the failure on the processes to work around the error. Okay, so now that we have an, an agreement on what data integrity is in terms of definition how can i develop data integrity in my company how can i work with that and create a scenario in which data integrity is a concern and is a common practice in my company first of all before we move into data integrity assessments your company is already expected to have a couple of things beforehand so data integrity is a result of a combination of many different factors, such as the strong quality, technology, people, and procedures. But some of these elements even precede some of the data integrity uh, documents and guidances. For example, having a unique user ID nowadays with many informatics uh, software, it's essential. Or having electronic signature is a good way to help people attributable to something, like an accountable for information. Computerized system validation and user training. User training is a very important point of data integrity. People come and go from your company. Processors change. You need to make sure that people are up to date with the company processes. Periodic reviews of critical data. That's also something important to review, not only as a data integrity assessment, but also as part of your normal routine checking audit trails is also part of periodic reviews of critical data and of course well-defined paper-based procedures uh, this is very important so people are consistent in terms of uh, procedures on how to fill that out so how can i make sure that all those steps are sufficient they are enough for me to guarantee the integrity assess the integrity you can conduct a data integrity assessment and check all those parts that I mentioned before. So what is a data integrity assessment? It is a risk-based assessment conducted by internal staff or independent third party as a consultant, for example, focused to detect weak spots on data integrity and helping to build a remediation plan from that point on. So sometimes you can see that also described under the acronym DIRA, which would mean data integrity risk assessment. So this is used to verify your company processes, both computerized and paper-based, certifying that data is consistent, complete, and accurate, uh, so aligned with the Alcoa stuff we talked before, throughout the entire data life cycle. So this is an important part of the process. So data needs to be complete, consistent, and accurate, along all the time that data must be kept. You cannot fully test your routine analysis and forget the place you store data. 
after everything is done. You have to make sure that data is integrated from beginning to end of their life cycle. So what parts of my system uh, the integrity assessment could cover? Uh, the reason why I put this slide together is to reinforce that data integrity is not only about software in your laboratory or network or your equipments you have. It's more than that. It, data integrity sits over the four pillars of any system. The hardware, the software that is used, the personnel that operate in this environment, and the procedures that, that people follow. All of those combined need to be analyzed when you're looking for data integrity. If you're only focused, for example, on making sure that your limb system does it what it's supposed to do, you're losing a lot of information that is uh, circling around your software, for example. Or making sure that your disaster recovery plans on our hardware side works is very important as well. You want to discover beforehand if you have something wrong with your disaster recovery plan. So a data integrity assessment gives you, uh, gives you enough time to detect things before they happen. So now that we have an understanding on the definition of data integrity and uh, what a data integrity assessment is, so how do I get started with it? How do I develop a good strategy to make uh, data integrity assessments, either my company or conducting a third party? What should you should expect from a third party in terms of data integrity assessments? So the best practices for data integrity assessments should be that you have, should have at least this package of information. You should have a kickoff meeting, a operational review, a project plan, a data integrity assessment itself, a gap analysis, a risk assessment, and a remediation plan. We're going to see in the next couple of slides what those steps mean and what are you expected to build from those informations and what do you go from here forward. So the kickoff meeting, what it is, uh, it is the, the start of a project. So it is important to connect team members and stakeholders, especially when you're bringing a third party to your company. It is used to manage expectations and to align team objectives. You need to make sure that the team working on a data integrity assessment is aligned on what is expected to be done. Uh, you're looking on ways to improve your organization's data integrity and you're not looking for culprits on an error. You're looking for an improvement opportunity. You need to align that with the team. So you get people to collaborate with you. Uh, it is good to establish effective coordination with any other initiatives as needed. A data integrity assessment is an effort of multiple departments on an organization, and it can also include third parties. So you have to get people to know each other and to coordinate efforts. So the effort can be uh, effective enough at the end of the project. So, and it also can be the starter for the creation of a project plan or agenda. The next step is the operational review. So it is used to bring the assessment team up to speed with the organization environment, processes, systems, and procedures. So typically a good way of doing this operational review, it would be done before anyone actually goes into the laboratory and starts making questions to the analysts or to managers and so on and so on. And the reason for that is because this review can generate extra questions and the need for more documents. Uh, from a consultant point of view, for example, it is important for us to have time to make this operational review. Typically what we do, we collect the most important procedures from the companies. For example, how do your companies uh, look for change controls? Uh, 
uh, how do you operate certain uh, critical applications. We read through that documentation. Maybe we might ask for validation documentation so we can see how it was tested. So if we do that beforehand, by the time we actually go to make the assessment itself, we have already some questions and some key places we, we are more focused with, we can look at. So giving enough time for people to gather that information is beneficial for the execution of the data, data assessment itself. This is also true when you're asking for people from different departments to look into your procedures. They are not, sometimes they're not familiarized on how you do things on your laboratory, for example. Giving time for people to get familiarized on the way procedures work is the best way to go. So as we said in the kickoff meeting, it also serves as a starter for a project plan or agenda. So as we're talking about a movement that involves multiple departments and maybe multiple companies as well, it must be built on an organized way and agreed upon uh, on information that was collected during the kickoff meeting. So you can coordinate tasks and have information by the time you need to check them. Uh, when the operational review is not capable to occur before going to the laboratory, what we also do is making sure on the project plan that we have places in which we sit down and look through the operational review documentation. If it cannot be provided uh, beforehand, we make sure that there's a time slot to be checking for the procedures themselves. So making sure that the operational review happens beforehand gives you uh, an extra time to work on other things while doing the assessment itself. So depending on the project coverage and scope, it can also be replaced by a more informal and streamlined agenda. Uh, let's say, for example, that uh, you hire a third-party company to do an assessment on your system, but you, you do not want the other company to build a remediation plan or something. You just need the findings in terms of issues. So the scope can be so reduced that you might not even build a whole project plan. You can build a smaller agenda for that. The data integrity assessment itself, uh, it is an in-depth investigation over the topics studied during the operational review step. Uh, the data integrity assessment generally is the boots on the ground part of the process. You go to the laboratories, you go to departments and you start interviewing people and asking about the findings you did in terms of the whole system. Any issues or asking how people do this or that part of the process. So you start really uh, asking people about information. Uh, this part of the process is best when done following the workflow of the company instead of an evaluation of separate data silos. What do I mean by that? Uh, you might think that of probably making a data assessment of let's say your ELN system. Uh, you could check the way your ELN system was implemented, the way it was validated, how information uh, goes in and out of the system. But again, you're losing a lot of information around the system. If the data integrity issue occurred right before data goes into your ELN and then you bring that information over, it is already tampered and it would not get that if you're only focused on the application instead of the entire workflow of data. So whenever you're doing an assessment, the best way to go is to look for the workflow of data and not exactly at one application or another. So it must include a review of organizational records and recording practices. We will focus again on the Alcoa, uh, on the Alcoa definition to see if it's accurate, consistent, maintained and stored and analyzed and reported the way procedures shall it should be done. And it must not be restricted to computerized systems as human interaction is generally the root cause of the majority of the data integrity issues. The reason for that, any computerized system, system does exactly what it is programmed to do and it is repeatable 
if it's doing it right, it's going to do it right most of the time. If it's programmed to do it wrong, it is doing what you've told it to do, but it's doing the wrong result. For people, people can have a lot of creativity on how to report data. Uh, sometimes they make honest mistakes. Sometimes it's purposeful. But in terms of comparison, the human interaction on any kind of system is the major cause of the majority of the data integrity issues. So that's why you should not focus only on the computerized system application. You should always look outside of it. So once you've done the kickoff, read the, the procedures, understood the processes, made questions, you figure out some gaps. So what do you do with this information? You gather all of those and make a gap analysis. What it is, it is basically an analysis of where you are right now versus where you need to be. And it tells you how far you are from those targets. So in the end, the gap analysis provides you the foundation you need for measuring investment of time, money, and human resources you require to achieve the desired stage. So you see where you are, where you need to be, and you can measure how much effort you need to go from A to B. So this is later on used when you're gonna build the remediation plan. Another part of the best practices of the integrity assessment is the risk assessment. So the risk assessment is made to prioritize what needs to come first and foremost based on the risk they impose for process system and customer safety. You need to prioritize uh, between all the issues you found on in terms of data integrity, any lacks of data integrity, you need to put the most relevant for things in first. So the result of this is not only to determine what is more important, uh, but also to determine uh, how bad things are in this process. So the gap assessment tells you how far you are, the risk assessment tells how bad problem is. So these two combined are used later on to build the remediation plan itself. So you know what the problems are, you know how far you are, you know how bad things are. So what do you do from this point? You build a remediation plan. So it is developed to remediate the data integrity regulatory gaps and it's built over the considerations made for the risk assessment. And it also helps you understand how periodically should you be checking those systems based on the criticality they have. Another common word used in terms of informatics uh, when talking to a mediation plan, uh, people like to call it a roadmap. So every time you're hearing about a roadmap, sometimes people are referring to a mediation plan as a roadmap. It's a much more common word to hear uh, in terms of projects. Uh, one important thing to point out here in the remediation plan as well, this is one typical point where companies get warning letters. Uh, if you check on the FJ's site for warning letters, uh, most of the companies do receive uh, 43 uh, forms and then they answer to those four or three forms and they get warning letters back. Most of the answers on the warning letters from FDA relate about uh, we do not agree on the way you think you should fix your problem. The reason for that is because some people focus on answering the warning, the four or threes with evidence that the data that was tampered or had some kind of data integrity issue was in fact right, but they do not show FGA that they really read the whole scenario, understood the problem, and came up with a remediation plan that is good enough to address that issue. So the lack of a remediation plan as an answer for uh, FGA's 403s end up generating a lot of warning letters associated to 
uh, data integrity issues. You can read a little bit more about this topic in other blogs we have at Asterix. We have a blog on trends in forward prison warning letters uh, written by Dale Curtis. And we have a couple of other materials around that as well. Uh, you can take a look at the Asterix website. So once we've done all of that, what is expected in terms of deliverables from the data integrity assessment? So an effective data integrity assessment will contain at least the following deliveries, he, deliverables here, which are built as a mutual collaboration between members and reviewed by stakeholders for completeness and acceptance. So if you hire, for example, a, a third party to help you do a data integrity assessment, don't expect that the third party company will deliver you the whole solution all from the top of their heads. They need to be in contact with you and check information back and forth, making sure that it's aligned, that it's real with what the company does. So it's a mutual collaboration between your third party or your external department and the laboratory. It's a, a set of hands over this report. So what is expected in terms of delivery? At least before the project starts, a finalized project plan, which will tell when are people going to be where, doing what. And after that, you have the on site assessment notes uh, telling all the findings on that data integrity assessment and also the data integrity assessment final report. Sometimes the assessment notes are inside of the final report itself, which will find the notes, gap analysis. Uh, the risk assessments sometimes, and even the delivery plan at some point. Okay, so there's a lot of work to make sure that all those points were, were attended, but what do I get from doing all this? What are the benefits of doing all this effort and then having to repeat that over and over again during periodic reviews of data integrity? What do I gain with that? So the benefits your company gains from having data integrity assessments regularly are, first, you strengthen for your organizational data integrity focus. It helps you reinforce to all collaborators that the organization is committed to data integrity, that data governance is something that your company cares about. It promotes an environment in which collaborators are able to and encourage to help identify and alert for data integrity issues. And it, so, the idea here as a definition is a quality culture versus a witch hunt. If people get punished or uh, look bad if they point out errors, they tend not to collaborate in the future if they find something else. So if the high level of management of a company encourages people to work with finding problems and help them work with looking for a solution, People get encouraged to do that. They can do that spontaneously, telling how that uh, the integrity issues occurred, or if the laws of the place you are permits, you could have, for example, an anonymous system in which people could point that out. But having people working with you is a way better to go. In addition to that, uh, having the integrity assessment regularly gives regulatory agencies a degree of confidence that your company knows how to address data issues properly. So, uh, for example, if you, you don't have to take my word as true, you can go on the FDA website and read the warning letters, the recent warning letters. You'll see a couple of them that in which the FDA says that they lack the confidence that the company has enough evidence that their information is addressed correctly and that they really looked into the data integrity issue fully as needed. There are a lot of comments about that. You can go into the FDA webpage and look that into the warning letters. Another benefit, it provides peace of mind. So, when you know that at some point in time, you're gonna have data integrity assessments, you can work on smaller increments of improvements to your system. So a robust review process gives you the peace of mind that 
things are identified and will be properly addressed. So this also gives you the peace of mind that you have a plan when something goes wrong. So when a problem appears, you have a pathway to go to address that. You have a structured way. So that's a good point of having periodic data integrity assessments. So one thing that is that regulatory agencies know that problem happens. Problems always happen. So what they expect from you is that you demonstrate capabilities to address such issues with sound technical and scientific accuracy and details. They need to feel the confidence that you know how to address issues. So if you have well-defined procedures to deal with the integrity issues, and you're able to demonstrate that you fully investigate them in a proper way, in a risk-based way, uh, the regulatory agencies give, get more confidence that you're able to address that. So the key definition here is proactive. You need to be proactive. You need to look for the data integrity issues during the assessment before they happen. So that gives you the momentum to do that if you have that structured and timely prepared. Another benefit of the integrity assessment that reduces costs. Uh, if you find an issue within your organization before you're pointed out by a regulatory agency or a problem with a customer, it gives you the opportunity to prepare for your for the remediation of that uh, better. So these costs associated to the integrity issue, they can be very significant. They can vary from warning letters, import alerts, facility shutdown, uh, a huge remediation cost that wasn't foreseen, uh, recalls, constant decrease. There are a lot of direct and indirect costs associated to data integrity issues. Uh, let's say, for example, a direct cost could be prohibitions or sanctions, or an indirect cost would be the company reputation. Just look at what happened to Volkswagen. Uh, they are dealing with a huge PR problem right now because of a data integrity issue. Another benefit from having data integrity assessments, you can stay focused on your core business. So you spend less time running after the compliance issues as they occur, so you can spend more time on your core business. So the key definitions here are you have a planned periodic review. So you have a point in time in which you gather people together and look into the data integrity assessments, and that gives you the opportunity to have incremental improvements. So you do not end up, for example, on 2020 with a computer using Windows XP, for example. If you look into that and you see that it imposes a risk to your process, you could have planned that beforehand so you could replace your system based on a risk-based assessment, for example. So having incremental improvements is better than having to rush after fixing a problem that was identified by someone else instead of you. So as final conclusions about this webinar, uh, data integrity are generally a uh, result of multiple factors. It can come from hardware, software, people, processes, and you need to make sure that all of those are checked when you're doing your assessment. Don't focus on only one of those parts. Another important point, company executives and senior management are responsible for creating a quality culture within the company. That mindset needs to go from top to bottom. So making sure that the company is accountable for data governance and uh, promoting people to help them working with data integrity is the best way to go and it needs to go from senior management to the rest of the company. Having an external consultant is beneficial as a fresh set of unbiased eyes can help identify GI breaches. The thing here is that uh, you have been working on your company for, I don't know, five, 10, 15 years, and you know all the procedures by heart, and you'll get uh, periodic retrainings over that, but you're already uh, used 
to those processes. Sometimes having someone coming from the outside is better because they can point out things that sometimes are just hiding in plain sight and you're just used to that because of your involvement with the company. It is, it, it kind of, it could sound weird that I'm a consultant and I'm telling that consultant is good, but again, you don't have to just rely on my words. Go into the FDA website and the warning letters and see the number of recommendations they do for companies to look for a third party company to help companies address their game theory issues. Uh, and last, but definitely not least, focus on data integrity should always be directed to making better and safer products for customers and not only to satisfy regulatory compliances. You cannot have your mindset as I, I'm caring about data integrity because I don't wanna get a warning letter or 43. That's a second concern that you should have. You must have data integrity to make sure that your product is good and is reliable and it needs to do what it needs to do. And public is satisfied and protected and safe with your products. So the focus should always be in making better products with your systems. So that's the main goal from having a data integrity assessment. So from Nastrix, uh, what you can have in terms of data integrity assessment services, we have experienced professionals. Our consultants are knowledgeable about FGA regulations. Our professional services are composed of lots of specialists on many applications. I am one of them. And we have a group with that covers a lot of lab applications like LIMS, CDS, ELN, SGMS, integration platforms, and so on. So we can bundle specialists together to address lots of uh, laboratory environments. And we can do thorough assessments because of that, because our experts access your laboratory informatics environment to identify data integrity risks, because we do that on a daily basis. We work with lots of implementations. We even work with system selections before you even purchased your application. So we go from choosing your system to implementing, to making integrations and so on and so on. So we touch a lot of those parts of lots of systems, helping build SOPs as well for those. So we deal with that on a daily basis. So we can help with verifying data origination, traceability, backup archives, reviews, quality culture of the company, because we help building validation protocols, for example, uh, documentations related to system operations, instruments integrations, and so on. We deal with that on a daily basis as part of implementation of the systems. We can surely help you guys also with the data integrity on those environments. And deliverables, what you can expect from Asterix in terms of uh, deliverables, you can expect the final reports with uh, the documentation of the gaps found during the process and the recommended remediation activities and improvements, not only in terms of software, but also in terms of architecture of our laboratory as well. We have uh, IT architecture specialists in our groups as well, and we can surely help with that. And with that said, uh, that's it for today's webinar, and now we are open for the questions section. Thank you very much, Marcelo. That was uh, that was great. I'm